Hey everyone, it's the 1st of September, so it's Sunday and it's 8.15 in the evening and I've got a bunch of stuff I want to show you. Not all of it is from boot fairs. This isn't from a boot fair. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start with this because it's already set up on here anyway because I was playing around with it last night. It is faulty, um, well that doesn't matter. I picked this up from the um, bin area out back of this building. I was just seeing a bag full of all sorts of stuff. Um, it was with a lot of other junk as well. Um, so I presume, it's all gone now, so I presume whoever put it there was going to do a dump run with it today. Except I beat them to it with this. <laughs> It is a Tascam portable studio, according to it, when the, it uh, boots up. So it's got eight channels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, master volume. Um, it sort of does work. Like I said, it's got a couple of faults. For example, I can turn it on there. I'll tilt this up. You can see it's on. But when I hold the power button down, it doesn't turn off. Um, it does play a CD, but it is ridiculously quiet through these TX speakers. And when I do give this a wiggle, like if I actually knock it up there hard, I do get a bit more volume out of it, but not a lot. So there's a volume problem. It's not this, because I don't hear no crackling or anything, so I don't think it's the um, slider. Um, but yeah. Now it turns off. That would not do that for me last night. No matter how many times or for however long I held that power button down, it did no shutdown. There is a hard drive in this as well because I can hear it winding up. That does have something about disk drive and formatting on the um, in the menu on this as well. Um, well, that might actually decide to work then I'll tell you what we'll do this might be a bit of a long video because I've got quite a bit I want to show you um, but anyway let's just turn this on again so you can put a CD in it I actually have no idea what you do with this I presume it's some sort of portable mixing station um, just letting that boot up there's some funky disco lights going on in a minute that says accessing up there, but I have no idea what it means. Alright, you put that in there. I think I've got to go into menu. No, home, no. I've got to remember how to do it. Pressing play doesn't do nothing, does it? CD, that was it, you press CD, player, okay, no, nope. I think part of the issue is the switch, because when I wiggle it, it does get louder. how you get it to turn down. Turn off rather not turn down. You actually have to go to the main menu screen before it'll let you turn the machine off. So I actually think that the only issue is that. Oh crap I just turned off with the CD in didn't I? Oh well. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move this out of the way. I've just unplugged everything. 
I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to open it up and we'll have a look inside it. So I thought that would be quite uh, interesting. I'll zoom you out a bit. So. I don't know why this audio is so quiet. Hopefully I can fix it. It'd be nice if I could fix it. Right. Oh, and uh, that tape deck, or well, this tape player boom box, call it what you will. Um, I'm really not sure what the problem is and why I've got a couple of tapes that sound like the chipmunks. I might actually go and get some more tapes to try because I put this one in it and it sounded okay. Plus, I used one of my um, personal cassette players with this adapter. It's one of those, you know, you plug this into an MP3 player or something and put that in your tape deck. It was for cars, you know, cheap way to um, play CDs and MP3s in a car if, you, if your car still had a tape deck. Um, and it played absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to double check it. Just to make sure it sounded okay on tape alone. But it doesn't when I put in, what is it, a Take That and a Spice Girls tape. Don't ask. They're just random tapes I picked up ages ago. In fact, I may have actually got those in the job lock. I've got so many tapes, I've actually forgotten where some of them come from. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't... I don't know if it's the tapes that are faulty or... If there is actually an issue with this... But I'm going to double check it again later and if I can't actually find an issue, I'll try some more tapes. I was going to put this back together again and say it's fixed. Um, I hope I haven't lost screws. Uh, they shouldn't be too far away from here. I think they're, they're under here somewhere. Anyway, I'm going to pause the video and go and get some bits that I picked up at a boot fair. Right, we're ready for the second part of the video. So, there's a bunch of stuff behind this monitor. So I picked this monitor up for three quid. Um, plan to use that on my desk. It's only got VGA, but for what I want to use it for, it will be absolutely fine for that. So brand on this, I never looked. Uh, got a product number and it's been electrically tested because it's got the sticker on there. But no, I can't see no brand. It seems to be just a generic monitor that I haven't actually tested that. Not yet. So, I'm going to do all this at the front first before I get to the radios and whatnot. So, got this as well for eight pounds currently not booting up it is turning on I'm seeing the power light and whatnot come on but it's just not um, doing anything I think it could be a backlight problem because I do see the screen flicker um, but yeah I'm not actually 100% sure what I can do to see if it is a backlight other than connect the VGA and try and get it to go out to an external monitor that's about the only thing I can do someone's had this apart because the screws are missing from the bezel oh that might be why the screen's not working, because it's not connected. Look, Ooh, can you see that in there? <laughs> I think I found out why the screen's not working. Hmm. Right, that might be something I'll have a look at later. Then I've got this one, though it's not an apple. Someone's just stuck a big apple sticker on it. It's an HP Omnibook. Yep, yeah, cost me £5. It's actually an Omnibook XE3, if anyone wants to Google that. Came with power supply, four or fiver. 
Um, it's got a Windows 2000 COA on the bottom, but um, that's actually irrelevant because someone's installed Windows XP Professional on it. Slow as any bloody thing, but uh, it does work. And to be fair, it's not in too bad a condition for its age. Um, I will restore this back to Windows 2000. May even change the hard drive on it. But yeah, I was quite happy with that purchase. Actually, I got the monitor from the same um, stool holder I got this from. Um, it looked like an Asian family. I'm not sure where from in Asia, but they were definitely Asian. Uh, if I was to guess, I would say somewhere like China? Maybe the Philippines? I'm not sure. <clears throat> you know, I don't know why, but I just think it's rude to ask people that. Anyway, everything else you see here, I got from the same seller. Believe it or not, one pound per item, that's all it cost. Um, and he, he basically just had these big blue plastic containers. There was about four rows of them, four rows of about ten, something like that. Well, probably not quite ten, but there was a lot. And they were just full of all sorts of junk, basically. And he was just saying, you know, one pound an item, does it work? Don't know, it's a pound. <laughs> so I thought, well, I admire your honesty. Anyway, I'm going to start with that. It's an Alba portable DVD player. I don't know why, because I've never used one of these. Um... But I wanted to make it up to £10 because there's a couple of bits here that I've left out. Like a battery pack for one of these that I forgot to bring through. But yeah, does it work? I don't know, is the uh, bottom line. But it shouldn't be too difficult to find out. Oh, DC in is, is um, 7.4 volts up to 12 volts. Well, that makes life easy. There's a sensor, I presume that's an infrared sensor for a remote control. Not with it. Power switch. He had a few of these there, but I like the look of this one out of all of them. And like I said, I was just looking for something to make up £10. So I grabbed the portable DVD player. Um, the other ridiculous thing I grabbed, because I didn't realise what it was at the time, I just saw a meter. <laughs> it's um, an exhaust gas analyzer. <laughs> uh, well, it'd give us something interesting to look at, wouldn't it? But yeah, I thought that was some sort of, you know, like an ammeter with all these wires and things coming off of it. You know, even a volt meter. I didn't really look. Again, I just saw a meter and picked it up. Remind me to look in the future. But never mind, that'll give us something to look inside of. Uh, don't know if it works, but it feels okay. It feels like everything's going to function. But I've got this um, quick shot with well, that type of connector. I can't remember what it's called. What is it? It's a quick shot for professional players. Oh, it's a QS 130F, is the model number. And it's got some. Buttons there. Like I said, I don't know if it work, but there's some damage to the cable there, I've just realised, and something over the corner there. But, uh, things like that don't really bother me. Cable can be fixed, so if it's broken, then I'll just snip it and re solder it, so no biggie. So, all that's left is one, two, three, four, five, six radios. <laughs> um, not all of them work. And this one I haven't actually tested yet. And this one actually surprised me when I got it home because I didn't realise it's a record player as well. It's a portable record player. Um, I'm going to start with this thing. This does actually turn on and play the tape, but it's very, very slow. So it's going to need probably good grease 
and um, a good greasing and new belts and that should actually work fine. It's actually got a built-in microphone so it's sort of a now you can have an external mic and earphone so this is sort of a you can have external battery and whatnot as well. It's like a um a dictation machine that doesn't use the small tiny little tapes you could get but uses full size ordinary cassette tapes. Um, well, like I said, I'm going to give the heads a clean because no doubt they'll need it. Uh, belts are going to be needed. Being a small device, I've got a load of small belts, so that shouldn't be a problem. Looks like there's just four screws. Yeah, there's just four screws to take out. So you've got a built in speaker on the back. I suppose with this, you could use it as a portable cassette player as well, a personal cassette player. It's what I thought it was when I first picked it up. It's made by Sanyo. So, something's rattling around in there as well. Uh, this one I tried to test, but there seems to be a battery contact problem, and I can't see what it is because the batteries actually slide back and forwards in there, they're not making connection. Um, but I can't actually see down there if the. Um, oh, I can see why there's no spring. That doesn't mean it's not repairable. Oh, I don't know it did that. Cool. Um, I should have some spare springs that might fit in this, actually. I pulled them off something that I was dismantling and going to throw in a bin. Don't know the brand of this. There is no brand name on it. It's a um, FM, AM and SW. And I think it's got, like, um, yeah, it's a nine band digital with alarm clock and receiver. So it looks like shortwave has got seven bands. And you've got AM, which would make your eighth, and FM, that would make your ninth. Yeah, that's well, actually quite interesting. And in fact, it's digital with AM and whatnot. That might be interesting. Seems to be some sort of light there. Yeah, just a little sort of portable radio alarm clock. It'd be ideal if you're travelling and you prefer something like this. DC 3 volts. We'll put earphones in it as well so you can use it as a portable radio. Pocket radio. Yeah, I would like to get that one going. So that one's going to have to come apart. Next up, we've got this Optimus. <laughs> It didn't work when I first put the batteries in, but I accidentally dropped it and it started working. And then it stopped working, so I just gave it a clout on that corner that I dropped it on and it started working again. So there's a dodgy or a loose connection somewhere in here. I don't think I left the batteries in here. No, I didn't. Actually, in fact, it could be the battery contacts because that spring, I've just noticed, is actually a bit dirty. And so is that. It could just be as simple as that, it could just be dirty battery contacts causing it. And I do know that on off switch, oh, it's actually working fine now, it wasn't working fine when I got it. But again, look at that, it's another 9 band radio. No it isn't, yes it is. Short wave, 1 to 6, in there. And we've got FM, MW and LW. So I never actually knew that all existed on shortwave, to be honest. Um, we've got the band select there, and then to select the shortwave bands, you've got a slidey switch there. And you can, don't know if you can see it, but there's a little indicator there. Same for the main band, so it's on FM at the minute. And we've got MW, LW and SW. So, yeah, that actually sounded pretty good when I did get this working. So, I'm going to clean the battery contacts up and see if that actually uh, cures the problem with that. Here is the next one. This one's got a bit of weight to it. Now, there's the antenna. Not a lot of good. <laughs> I think I might just throw that whole thing out. Um, Actually, no, I can't. I will keep that bit because that does fit into there. Although, 
I couldn't get a signal when I had it in there. But this is a Grundig Music Boy 160. Uh, four band stereo. Now this has got a very bad problem with the volume switch. It's very crackly and doesn't actually turn down. So I'm going to have to bring my, my uh, can of WD-40 home. Because I actually find that works pretty well as a contact cleaner if you don't have proper electrical contact cleaner. Uh, so I need to open this one up so I can get to that. And get whatever that is in there out because it's wrapped. Yeah, this has got uh, FM, SW, MW and LW. It's a little bit scruffy. There's wear on the plastic along the edge, obviously where it's been stood up probably for so many years. Headphone socket on there. That's your power button, that's where the antenna goes, a big hole. And that's your tuning dial. And this, I think that's the balance. Well, that could be your tone actually from the look of it. Yeah, that's your tone, not your balance. But, uh, a bit weighty for a little thing, to be honest. I'm running out of room. <laughs> I might have to start putting some of these back in a carrier bag, because I've still got more stuff that I want to show you. Now, this one does actually work brilliantly. There's nothing wrong with that one, so now it's definitely worth the pound. This is a Panasonic... Feather Touch controls, Panasonic GX80 with Feather Touch controls. Um, I think it's another, no, it's a five band receiver, so it's got FM, MW, M, I'll start that bit again <laughs> FM, LW, MW, SW1, and SW2. And, um, yeah, I actually quite like this one. A little bit of rust on the old grill there, but nothing major. The old band select at the top there. Nice antenna. That antenna would probably fit my Toshiba over the back there, but I'm not going to take it off a good working radio. I don't get it, because it's got a operation there on off, but then it's got this Feather touch button there. Just give it a light tap that turns it on and off with a little red LED indicator. But yeah, I actually quite like that one. It's definitely one I would keep in my collection. Some of these I might repair and what that Grundig, I'm not too keen on that one. That might get repaired and put on eBay as a working machine. And like I said, this one actually surprised me because I just saw this in the box, big handle there, dials on the top of the ooh, an old fashioned style radio, a very old one. And then when I got home, I noticed it did this and it revealed. Um, a record player. So we've got speed select and that moves good. We've got Thing to move the tone arm. Do we have a stylus? It does have a stylus. Does it work? I actually have no idea. Does it stink? Yes. It smells old and fo foisty like it's been stored somewhere damp like an old attic or a shed or something. And I have noticed it's got some damage on that corner, but my stepdad has actually suggested putting like a brass corner on all four corners, which will actually cover that up quite nicely. I'm just going to quickly take this cover off because I'm presuming this is battery powered as um, there's no mains plug on it. So, we don't open that up. It is. It takes D-cell battery. It's, I think it takes about four or five, six. Um, a little bit of corrosion on that one. It's really damp. Ah. Look at that. 
rusty screw up there for a battery contact. Easily solved, I'll just put a clean screw in there. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if something is leaked in there because that corner does feel rotten so I mean it could be an extreme restoration if it works by extreme I mean I would actually have to um, unwrap all of this wrapping and replace it with something similar you know, the closest I can find a material like this or well, I would have to do that, then replace this piece of ply and that piece of ply, because that's all they are, they're just plywood. But yeah, the batteries go in there. Or another option is to cut, you know, a section of this out and then repair it. And just sort of glue in the replacement bits. But I have to say, it does look pretty clean and tidy in here. Um, I have got D batteries, but I think I'll actually go and buy some more tomorrow because um, I need to get that screw replaced anyway because that is not going to connect or make a good connection with that. So, that was actually really nice and tidy in there. May need new capacitors. Just feeling, you know, that there could be a couple of screws missing. There's a foot missing as well. I might actually do this one as a a major restoration project, you know. Um, I know some people would be like, "Yeah, you should keep it original," but I don't know how I would keep that corner original. You know, <laughs> it's completely rotted out from the looks of it. That's what it looks like has happened. Something's it's either been sitting somewhere damp or a battery has leaked and rotted it out. Um, but yeah, either way, that's going to need some serious repair. I'm on a number of um, vintage radio groups and whatnot so I might see if I can get some advice from there what people would suggest because obviously whatever way I do it all of this nice speaker covering here is going to have to be redone um, you know there isn't really any information on this so don't know Oh, it's made by EAR, apparently. Made in England. Electric audio reproducers. Oh, I've not heard of them. I don't know if something like this has got any value to it. But, I actually think done up that would actually look quite nice. So that's what I'm going to do. Right, I'm going to move on. Because I'm rambling and getting carried away talking about this. What do you guys think? Should I... Uh, you know, completely strip that out and um, rebuild it, recover it and repair that wood and whatnot. Or try and sort of patch up that corner. You know, there's a couple of options. So I'll see what you guys think and I'll get some advice from others as well. Anyway, I will be right back with the next lot. As you can see, I also had a pretty good day at uh, <laughs> collecting up die casts. Um, I actually have no idea how many is here, it's just a lot, including some rolling stock for the railway that I want to do. Believe it or not, these were £3 the pair, and these are Triang, and these are actually in pretty good condition. This one's actually newer out of the two. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, I now have a couple of coaches. I'm sort of collecting the rolling stock here and there. Um, actually, before I go on, I did pick up these as well. 
So I've got three laptop hard drives here. So you're connected. Connectors. Uh, there's a Hitachi 500 gig, I believe. I'm just trying to find it. I oh, know I read it on here somewhere. That's a, yeah, that's 500 gig. Um, this Toshiba, I believe, is also a 500. No, it's 160 gig. So I thought wrong. And that's a 320. Um, I picked those up because I actually don't have, or didn't think I had, that many SATA laptop hard drives. But I've got quite a stack of hard drives in here. Oddly enough, most of them are actually um, SATA, especially the desktops. I really could do with some IDE ones. Anyway, um, I'm just going to pick through my favourite buys out of this. So here's one of them. Matchbox Cortina. I've actually got this in gold and I've actually got... <laughs> and zoom you in. A custom painted one right there. The purple one. My stepdad. Um, last autumn he did that. Because uh, I did one at the original colour. And he just thought that would be nice to do um, a custom colour with a black roof to simulate a vinyl roof. So that's what we did. That one I might keep as it is or I might get it restored to a similar red. But I do have a gold sort of coloured one as well. Which is actually the colour of that purple one was originally. I mean, so that's one of my favourite buys. Another one. This is Matchbox Mark II Ford Escort RS2000. These are a pain in the ass to get hold of. <laughs> Simply because there's a lot of collectors out there that love these. Um, you can get them on eBay, but naturally they do go for a decent price. That cost me just one pound. Which I actually thought was a very nice bargain and grab, grabbed that. Because I've got the purple one, but I haven't got a red one. There's also a yellow one, and I think there's a blue one. Um, so I wouldn't mind getting one of each colour if I can. At some point in the future. But yeah, I'm on a, um, a few die-cast groups on Facebook. And uh, whenever anything like that comes up for sale, they're, just, they're gone like that. <laughs> I'll never fast enough to grab one someone was selling you know they had a photo like this up on the group selling everything in a photo and there was a yellow one of those escorts but I was too slow again couldn't you know someone had beaten me to it so well the, the seller hadn't replied to him unless they were talking in private message but you know he asked first so I, d I wouldn't feel it was right if I asked for the same thing so Anyway, what else have I got in here? Some nice buys. The guy I got the laptop hard drives from also sold this. Corgi. Transporter truck. And. Box. Um, he did have some more Corgi lorries that size. But he's there pretty much every week. So. I might get another one or two next time I go although I think season would be coming to an end soon and we are actually planning to go to the North Norfolk Railways 1940s weekend um, so yeah I think this month is actually the last month for the car boots I go to unfortunately but never mind it's always next year um, the same guy I got that red Ford Escort from I got this and this this was in his 50p box by the way so each one of these were 50p so one pound fifty for the set because this this would have been a three car set when that was new the Dr Pepper set that's yeah, not in brilliant condition but Nemo's belly aching 
in the background. I don't know if you've heard of meowing. I've, I know exactly what he wants. I'm going to do that as soon as I've done this video. Uh, what else can I pick out? It's another favourite. That one, because I do like my corgis. You probably notice there's a whole row of corgis there. So I found the Range Rover Ambulance. I've got the police version of this. Now I've got the ambulance version. Which is almost the same casting. They've changed the top bit. Um, and instead of having just a black panel in there, they've actually got a clear panel for a you know, simulator window. But uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same casting. With just ambulance and a red cross on it. So that will go, hopefully, next to the other one. Um, and all the rest, apart from the little Renault 5, which I've noticed has got part of the bumper missing, but never mind, I still like it. Um, they're all taxis. Each and every one. Mercedes, Mercedes, Ford Sierra and Peugeot. Let's see what they are. There's a Peugeot 505 STI. In pretty nice condition, I have to say. Cheers Nemo, I might leave his tray for a little bit longer because he's just been. Ford Sierra, I think these were two pounds each and I thought that was a decent price, you know, they're in fair condition. I've actually got a police version of this, I just noticed the boot's a bit twisted, can I? No. Yeah, <laughs> I have to play with that see if I can get that to fit properly. Uh, then we've got this Merc, which is the 240D, which I quite liked. He had a London black cab, but I've actually got the London black cab. Look at this, this one, Ooh, with working sunroof, look at that. I didn't notice that before. I had no opening doors on this one. Do they open on the orange one? Oh, they do open on the orange one. And on the Peugeot. That one is the 190E, which is actually one of my favourite Mercedes models. I do like the 190E. Always have liked the 190E. And I'm not a huge Mercedes fan, but I do like that one. There's a few Matchbox Super Kings here. That is BMW Rollermatics. I can do it. There you go, you see stop sign off. Stop sign on. It's what's called the Rollermatics. They did them in this size as well. What's that one? 1980 something, I'm guessing. 1986. BMW. Uh, I've got the refuse truck as well, I think. That cost me two quid. As did the BMW police car. Um, and I got that. That was actually thrown in for free, and I can't remember what I bought. It was this one. I bought this one. From the same um, lady I got the two railway wagons from, and this dump truck actually. And I went back and got that one, she threw that in for free. Um, but I wanted this one because I've actually got another one, which coincidentally has three wheels missing. They've both got three tyres missing. So for now, I was going to compare them, and the better one of the two I'll make up with the four tyres, and eventually probably get it restored because believe it or not there's lots of different sized wheels I've got some cranes matchbox cranes in this scale um, this is king size and uh, <laughs> the tires don't fit even though they look like it any other favorites I want to pick out of here um, I've got some doubles like these two Lotus Euro Europas. I seem to have a bit of a speech impediment tonight. Anyway, I think I've actually got a third one of these in my collection as well. These are rather play worn. I mean, look at the wheels. Well, I thought, you know, have a couple more, a couple of custom restorations or something, you know. Parts. Who knows? Got some nice corgis. A little corgi BP oil. Uh, quite a number of matchboxes. Here's another corgi. Mark III Ford Escort. If I do get to go once more before the season ends, I'm going to go to the um, a store that I usually go to and get a lot of my Matchbox cars from. 
like that one and that one for example and um, get a few more because he's got a few more that I wouldn't mind adding to the collection well, I wish I actually got when I was there last maybe I can get to go this weekend oh, yeah this weekend coming I don't know yet uh, I don't think there's a lot else well, I found this little Wrangler jeans Porsche 911 from Matchbox I didn't know they actually did that I've got the red one and I can't remember what's on the red one I think it's just got some racing markings on the red one um, thought that was nice I don't know if anyone remembers the Matchbox cars that had those wheels well that is a Nissan it's a turbo oh, I can't read it oh it's actually a Datsun Ah, oh, so this would have been when they hadn't quite changed their name yet. So that's a Datsun. I've actually got this little Leyland Sight Hut truck. But I think I have already got this, but I don't think I've got one with the super fast wheels on it. So I saw that and I grabbed that as well. Some nice Hot Wheels, some older Hot Wheels. I want this pickup truck. Uh, what else? That. I didn't believe it when I looked at it. This is actually a Dinky Toys. Um, yeah, Dinky Toys Viceroy Coach, made in England. I didn't know Dinky Toys actually made Dinky Toys. I thought they made this sort of scale, you know. So yeah, it's quite a nice one. Another one of these that someone's put some racing numbers on. That's not original from the factory. Someone's... Um, I actually have to say, it's not bad, considering that was done freehand. I mean, you can see the yellow stripes are a bit wobbly, but... Yeah, I don't know why, but every time I see one of these, even though I've already got three of these, this is my fourth, I just like picking up the Austin, that's, that's the 1100, isn't it? Yeah, MG 1100 or Austin 1100, but you know what you mean. So yeah, another one to get restored. Perhaps I could use that idea and just you know, do a custom one as a race car. So I think the doggy's been damaged in the back there anyway on this one. I think, I'm not quite sure. Uh, not many majorettes this time. Mostly sort of corgis and matchboxes. I don't know why, but I went to two different stalls and bought two of these. <laughs> um, Mountain Rescue. See? There's the other one, so. Yeah, I don't know why, I just saw them both and thought, well, I've never seen these before, so I'm going to buy them. <laughs> so I did. A couple of Range Rovers. And Lady Penelope's um, Thunderbird car. I can't remember that Thunderbird Fab 1. There we go. Some kind of mathematical police car from Matchbox. It's actually in pretty good condition. That's almost mint. A few marks on the bumper, but... Picked up yet another one of these. I have a habit of doing that. If I really like a little vehicle, I will always buy them when I see them. I think I've got three of these already. So again, that would be my fourth. I've got that many of them. I could, again, do some custom ones. Because that's meant to be a scaffold truck. That's what they come out of the factory as. But, uh, yeah. So, I think it was going on for quite a while, isn't it? I'm going to pause again because there's uh, one more radio. I think that's the last thing I want to show you. And uh, I think that'll be it for this video. So I'm going to clear all this away. I'm going to put them back in their bags. And uh, apart from the railway coaches, because I don't want them to get broken. And uh, I'll be back. Now that thing is bloody heavy. <laughs> swear that is heavier than my other one. So this did not come from a car boot sale. Um, the guy I got that 
record player from and the GEC tube radio contacted me I think it was Friday no it wasn't it was uh, earlier last week that would have been I think about Tuesday um, offered me a, a vintage bicycle it was it's actually a 1950 Triumph ladies bicycle which I've got sitting down at Mum's in fully rideable condition. Obviously it's looking rough considering its age, which me and Mum worked out was 69 years old, but it's still in damn good condition for its age. You know. Anyway, he offered this as well, so I got both for 20 quid. This one does not have a plug on it. Right, see, this has got a fairly old cable on it because it's got the old black and red colours in it. But this flex, I'm just going to check it. Can't feel no damage on it, so I'm happy with that. But this is a Pi. Uh, I think it's a 9 band. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 band. No idea what any of these controls do. I don't know how you turn it on and off. That stops at both ends, so that's going to be volume. That's going to be a um, wave selector. Then it's got this, which also has a lot of selections on it. And then there's this one, which is your tuner. I don't know how you turn it on. Um, I can turn it around. Cambridge, England, this was built, allegedly. Important, before connecting mains plug, see that voltage adjuster inside receiver has been set to your mains voltage. In that case, I better make sure I double check that <laughs> before I do plug it in. I'm probably not going to plug this in until it's been recapped, if it hasn't already. So that comes off. And when I took this off, because I had everything dropped off at Mum's, when I took this cover off at Mum's, I actually found this in here. This. It's the original paperwork. With the original notes. The Pi Quick Release, Pat applied for 26642 slash 45, permits the removal of chassis without turning the cabinet over. To remove chassis, it's two screws, take off all the knobs, pull it forwards. It's that simple to get that chassis out of there. Um, but what I like on this as well, look at that, there's even a circuit diagram. And a calibration chart as well. And all the um, condensers and resistors and things. By the way, condenser is an old name for a capacitor, in case you're wondering. So it actually tells you what they all are. Look, and there's a big list. So there's quite a number of them on that. Fitting a new... Oh, you can get new tuning scales for it as well as... One, two, three, four transformers. Tells you the inductances. Condensers continued. Mains consumption. The resistor values, switches and lamps. I don't know if this has actually got lamps on it. Presuming with these little holes there, as there's eight of them, they adjust each of your bands. So this is a P35 with its serial number. 200 to 230 volts. Ah! So it is, you get three selections here, look that's how you select your voltage. It's just that little thing. Um, big pin goes to the centre, so you can't actually get this round the wrong way. I don't think it would matter, really. Um, but it's got 
236 to 250, 235 and 200 to 215. So I'm going to put this back where it was, which was 236 to 250 volts. Doesn't look like there's a lot of tubes in here. I can see five because there's this one here. That one, big one there, big one over there, bloody great big speaker. I think the bulbs are actually still there, you know, ready to illuminate the front panel. Another big tube there. I don't know why over here in England we call them valves. Does anyone know why we call them valves? I can understand the Americans and pretty much everywhere else that I've seen calling them tubes. In England, however, we have to be different. We'll call it a valve. It doesn't actually resemble a valve, but we'll call it a valve anyway. Let's just get the back back on. Oh, I'm going to put this um, paperwork in here as well. So, when Mum said she wanted my other one, she can have that one if she wants. I wouldn't mind getting this one up and running and cleaned up. Um, the cabinet, apart from a few scratches here and there, I might just see how well I can clean it up. I don't think I'll get it refinished because I think, and this is just my opinion, on something vintage like this or antique, whatever you want to call it, friggin' old, <laughs> um, if it's in reasonable condition, I just feel it should be left as it is. You know, if it seems to have uh, aged pr well enough. But if it's extremely tatty, like that record player earlier in the video, then I'd probably consider doing a full restoration on it. But, yeah, I'm not seeing any damage to the woodwork. A few scratches. So something white there that looks like it will come off with a bit of elbow grease so I mean I know someone that could refinish the cabinet if I wanted it refinished I just wish I knew what the blinking knobs did there was once upon a time something written on them but I can't read it now yeah that's got tuning written on it that Turn up the right way. It was up the right way. Wave changer. What's this one then? Ah. It's got tone on it. Oh, I see. That's your wave selector. That's just a clunky tone selector. And that actually says volume. So, how do you turn the damn thing on and off? It can't just stay on all the time, can it? Yeah, those four knobs, they just pull off. Um, it would be nice if I could actually just refinish these with the words somehow. You know, it's got tone written on it right there. That has only got a volume written on it. I did wonder you know, if it was like a pull to turn it on and push to turn it off, but all that does is literally just remove the knob. Uh, so, answers on a postcard on how you turn it damn thing on and off. Maybe it's on the wave changer. Or on the tone, you know. There's something else written on there.
Yeah, I'll have to have a... I'll have to get a magnifying glass out, I think, to see that. Oh, and very quickly... This I bought on eBay and totally forgot I'd bought it. I'd actually paid for it and everything, I just forgot about it. Until I was uh, looking in my emails and found an email from eBay saying your item has been shipped. And I was like, what item? So I opened up the email and found this and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot, I bought that. So I think this is $1.99 on eBay, it's the EverReady Motormate 2. Which does work. It's actually uh, pretty bright as well. It's not going to be very bright in here because I've got too many lights on. But... And going back to that Triumph bike, this was one of the rear lights on it. Took it off to bring home. There was no light bulb in it. And the... if I just undo that, the actual ring here, as that makes part of, of the um, connection, I gave that a clean up with some steel wool and screw the lens back in. I have to put the bulb in it. And... There we go. It does work. Not the brightest thing on the planet, but now I did actually buy one of these with a black body on eBay uh, a couple of months ago. So I've got that sitting in the shed at Mum's. I bought it for the bike that I want to restore for the Phillips. Um, but I might actually go for that one. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to prefer the grey bodied one or the black bodied one. But we'll see. So, I'm in the mood to tinker with something. I'm just not sure what I'm in the mood to tinker with. <laughs> I'm getting tired as well. I'm planning to stay here tomorrow, so... It's not actually too late. It's only 9.30, so it's taken me an hour to do this video as it is. I know I haven't got an hour's, of an hour's worth of footage. Anyway, actually with the way I ramble, I probably have, so... Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video interesting. Hopefully next time you see that Toshiba radio over there, it will be all buttoned up. Um, and hopefully have a few more bits and bobs up and running. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye!